Slackline, just being able to walk across is a good feat of balance that anyone would be happy with. But there are people out there that are able to do these amazing tricks on the slackline. For this 24 hour challenge, I'm gonna have one day to try to learn one of these skills, the butt bounce, the slackline trick that most beginners start with. So I've got my slackline, I've got my spot, and I've got my one day. Let's see if I can get the butt bounce in one day on the slackline. The butt bounce is in which you are standing on the slack line, drop into a butt bounce, which is kind of a seating position. Use that momentum bounce back up onto your feet. And that's what I wanted to accomplish. The skill you need before to start is be able to walk on the slack line. The good news is I already have that experience and I also have a tutorial on how to walk across the slack line. So you can always check that out, but I got the first mark, check. That and I had all the equipment that I needed. The slack line, tree protectors, and sunscreen, cause you gotta protect that delicate skin. Water, cause hydration is key. Set up the slack line, made sure it was below crotch level so that if I ever miss, I don't, you know, lose that option. First was getting used to that seating position, the position that I needed to fall into. What that position looks like is there's usually one side that's gonna be more dominant that you're gonna sit onto. Then whatever side you're on, the leg that is closest to the slack line, your knee is gonna be pretty much touching the slack line. Then it's gonna make a diagonal from your knee all the way to your hips. If it's filling up a crack, you have gone too far. All I wanted to do was practice just being in that, just bouncing up and down and getting the feeling of it. Now it was time to break it up into two parts. There was the jumping into the bounce and that was jumping back onto your feet. I decided to practice the bounce to stand because honestly, I was just a little scared. Yes, is a little spooky. In the tutorials that I watched, it suggested that I sit into that sitting position, try to do a bounce, and I could have one of my feet touching the ground, dabbing the ground a little bit and creating that bounce in order to get used to it. Then I would go onto my feet. That foot on the ground is just supposed to be a help. It is not supposed to do all the work for you. I was also a little nervous about missing my feet. So a good progression that I tried was literally just having the slack line at a spot that was really low and just jumping onto it. That also helped me figure out where I needed my feet to be in the first place. I brought that into bouncing back onto the slack line and that felt pretty comfortable. I was dabbing a lot, but you know what? I was ready to move on to the next progression. Hopefully that wouldn't hurt me in the future, but I have a feeling it will. So theoretically, I had half of the move already. Now I just needed the first part, standing on the slack line and going into that seating position. This was a lot scarier and a lot harder. I really couldn't commit to the move. I don't know if it was mental or if I was just scared of falling. Even though I did all the practice of failing, I was just scared to commit from standing to sitting. So my plan was to dab on the ground. The idea was to get into that seating position and figure out where that foot needed to be on the ground in order to help me. Then I would slowly use that foot less and less to be able to get in that position. That helped a lot, but that didn't fix the position I needed to be in. The less I relied on my foot, the more I realized that I was slowly falling from one side to the other. In order to fix that, I needed to keep my chest up and forward. I needed to make sure that I was aligned with the slack line and I needed to look forward towards the tree in front of me, a center point. Just like my slack line tutorial on how to keep the balance, I needed my center of mass in the middle. If my center of mass was off the middle, then it, that's how I'm gonna fall. So that fixed the second part. I was ready to move on to the next progression. With the videos that I watched, if you had a friend or someone to be able to help you support you, they can adjust based on the height that you were going with and you can slowly use them less and less. But pff, look at this loser. Look how many friends that he would have. Wait, but you're me. Yeah, I know. Found a stick, practicing it, and it broke instantly. So I went back with just trying and trying to use my foot less and less, but man, it's just scary. It's something mental. There was a mental block stopping me no matter how many times I tried again and again and again. I needed some sort of support. What I realized is I did bring something that I could use and we had the technology, the tripod. Using that to finally have some sort of support, I finally was getting progress and I was able to combine both pieces together. Standing on the slack line, dropping into the butt bounce position and going back to my feet. I was onto something. Since I had the whole motion together, I decided to eliminate the tripod to get even closer to my goal. And it looked so much better. I was so close, but yet I'm not even close to being done. Oh, why not? Well, you know why? Because I have to eliminate the dab. Try to rewatch the progress to have an idea to see where I was at. I was dabbing a lot. The problem with what I was doing is I was aiming on my foot. All the support and all the way it was going my foot, then I was sitting down and then I was pushing up with my foot instead of using the bounce. That is not what I was trying to do. 
What I said earlier about the bad habits coming in, here is what it was shooting myself in the foot. And I needed my foot to be on the slack line. So I grabbed my tripod technology again, and I continued to try to just jump onto the bounce without putting my foot on the ground. Man, that was spooky. It was scary. And you know what? I needed to go through it. I should have done this way earlier, and now I was more ready to go onto the next step of actually doing the full butt bounce on its own. The next logical step would be to do the full thing, to slowly eliminate the tripod on its own, to not use that as a support. The problem is I didn't have enough bounce when I eliminated my foot being on the ground. I tried to go in the middle of the slack line where I think there's the most amount of bounce. I tried tightening the slack line. I tried from just sitting on the ground, trying to create as much bounce as I could to get back onto my feet. And even then, that didn't necessarily give me the bounce that I needed. Then I tried looking online and I couldn't find the answer. Maybe I was not jumping into the bounce from high enough, thus the progression would be to use a friend in order to help you. And you know this guy and his friends. Just kidding, there's no one. So I was kind of stuck because I thought I needed to drop from higher on the slack line in order to get more bounce. But then when I watch the tutorials, they're able to do it from very low on the slack line. No matter how many times I tried and no matter how many more practice that I gave into it, it just wasn't working. And I didn't know if it was me or the slack line. And let's be honest, there's a good chance that it was me. Obviously, my only option was to just keep getting the practice into it because even if it was the slack line, I don't have another slack line. And if it was me, I just needed to keep practicing it. So it was time to hammer down and just keep practicing. After practicing again and again and again, I was getting really, really sore. The knee beside the slack line was getting very sore. And honestly, just my bum sitting on it was hurting as well. And I was also losing time. So I kept trying and trying and trying and after since i started as the sun was slowly setting and the day was almost done something happened i got it i finally got it i got it yes minor dab little bit teeny teeny dab a very small dab but yes i finally got it that felt so good all the work that i got so i wanted to make sure that i could show a better angle of it and i couldn't recreated. I couldn't get it again. And to be honest, the soreness finally got to me and how tired I was by there. I don't know how much I had left, but I was happy with what I finally got. Now for the future, the goal is just to get it consistent, actually getting better. But what I got in this one day was pretty satisfying. So are you going to learn any slackline tricks or learn how to do the slackline and maybe give yourself more than one day? Or do you know what I did wrong or any other tips and tricks that you would give? Please leave a comment down below so me and everyone else of this awesome community can learn something from each other. And do you know any other slackline tricks or any other tricks that you have? Please, you can always hit me up on social media and I would love to see those awesome things. And that's one day done, another one to go. And I will see you at the next adventure.